Hello, I'm Dan Solchuk and today we're going to go over how to use the basics of the Samsara ELDM. We're going to open up the Samsara app and when you open it up it's going to ask for three fields. It's going to ask for a fleet ID, username and password. All three will be provided to you by your fleet admin. We'll type these in now. And the very first thing we see when we sign in are, it asks us for vehicle and shipping IDs. Oftentimes you will not know what shipping ID you have, so you can skip that, but it is important to select the vehicle right away. It is going to double check with us if we are sure that it's the vehicle we want to select. We click confirm, and we know that we've picked the, right, the vehicle fully when it shows up right under vehicle. We click done, and um, we're going to do a general overview of, of the app. Hours of service is where you're going to spend most of your time. That's where you do 90% of your th things. DVIR, that's where you're going to do your pre-trip and post-trips. Routes is something that not all fleets use. We're not going to really go into that. Same thing with documents. Vehicle is if, in case you need to change your vehicle or sign out of your vehicle. And team driving is if you're driving with a partner. If you're doing team driving, this is the step we're going to add your team driver. We click the team driving tab, and then we click add passenger. We now enter our partner's login. If it is their shift, you would then set them as driver. This is a very important point because if you do not set them as driver, then all the driving they do will go to your logbook and then it'll cause all sorts of issues. If, if we're the driver, we set ourselves back as driver and we could exit back. Next piece we're gonna go over is the hours of service tab. At the top, we see a rectangle where it shows us what status we're in. If we'd like to change that status, we click it, pick whatever status we'd like to go into and then click save. We just switched into sleeper berth. The four circles on the screen show us how much time we have until break, how much driving time we have remaining for our shift and total shift time for the day and how much cycle we have. If we scroll down a little bit more, we will see log and roadside. Log is just to see your day's log and roadside is in case you get pulled over. Let's click that. It will offer us to create a pin. What this pin does is it locks the officer into just seeing the last seven days, seven or eight days of your logbook. We'll click lock and continue to lock it in. And this is what the officer is going to see. If they ask for ELD materials, that button is at the top, middle top. We can click that, it'll show it to them in uh, English, French, and there's also transfer papers in case they are unaware of how to transfer it for themselves. If they need help transferring it, the transfer button is in the top right. We click transfer, we uh, give the options of wireless web service and email for DOT. When we're done with the roadside inspection, we click back. It'll prompt us to type in our pin that we created. We click done, continue, and we're back on the hours of service screen. If you need to see any of your previous day's logs, this is where you just click in to review it, see what, what status you did, and that sort of thing. One of the things that drivers oftentimes forget is to enter their shipping IDs and trailer number. We will click today's day to add that. And right in forms, there's the two fields that we need. Trailer, we now enter whatever trailer number we have. We click save. It'll offer us to assign it to our partner. If you have one, we can click yes, set for all. And now your partner will not need to add that themselves. And we can now enter the shipping IDs. We 
then we click save it'll offer us the same thing to transfer it to our partner as well we can click yes set for all and can go back it is important to make sure that your day, previous days are certified if today is not over you do not need to make sure it's certified it is acceptable but if you have a previous day that's not certified the DOT can give you a hard time about that and uh, to show you how to certify I'm going to certify today's day we just click certify and submit we acknowledge that yes everything looks good we click agree and submit and we're all set Now we're going to go over the DVIR and how to properly do a pre-trip. We will click hours of service. We will make sure that we have hours to drive. Next we click the status bar. We pick on duty. We add a remark. We can type out the remark or we can pick from the selections available. Then we click save and we are on duty. Next we return to the main menu. We click DVIR. We click create DVIR. It then offers us if we'd like to do vehicle only or tr vehicle and trailer. We're going to click vehicle and trailer. We then need to make sure that it has the trailer number. And then we scroll down and pick what type of inspection we're doing. In this case, it is a pre-trip. The next section is walk around photos. This is something that is going to be up to your, up to your company if they require it or not. And this is the screen where we then go out and inspect the truck and trailer. Once we come back and everything is good, we add any defects if there are any and then we choose if the vehicle is safe or it is unsafe to drive in this case we went out check the truck trailer everything is good we click safe to drive we then click next and it asks us to reconfirm that yes everything is safe to drive we click certify and submit and we are all set we show that that last pre-trip was us it is safe and we're good to go but one important thing is to make sure we don't skip steps in DVIR and while you to keep it open while we are going around and checking the truck and trailer because we can you can actually see how long the DVIR was. In this case, you know, uh, it shows that this DVIR was only two minutes because we we're doing this as a demonstration. Now we're going to go over the common misconceptions, misunderstandings that sometimes happen regarding switching duty statuses. For instance, when we're doing a pre-trip or we're fueling, we want to specify what we're doing. We will click hours of service and we see the hours of service circles and right above them we see the duty status. We click it and here we can choose sleeper berth, on duty, driving, personal conveyance, if that's enabled by your, your fleet, same thing with yard move. Some duty statuses will require a remark, but not all. We pick the duty status we would like, we click save, and we are all set. If we pulled up to a, a gas station, fuel stop, we'd click on duty, and it is best to add a remark. You can add fueling. We then click done and save. We click save and now we go on duty. And in case a DOT officer does stop you and looks at your logs, they will they will see that you properly annotated that you were on duty fueling up. And if another similar instance is if you are at a shipper and checking in, you must notate that you're checking in at a shipper. But then once you back up to dock and you want to rest, you can put yourself into sleeper preferably and you can sleep. But if you were putting yourself in off duty, that is harder to justify because that means you are not doing any sort of obligation for the company and DOT can give you a hard time. It is a lot easier to just put sleeper that you went to sleep. Mm -hmm. 
next thing we're going to go over is personal commands. How to go into it. We click PC. Not all companies will have this enabled. This is for companies that do have enabled. And PC is one of the few modes that requires a remark. So if we're going to get some food right now, we're empty, we can put getting food. Save, click save, and we are now in personal commands. Common issues that can occur with your logbook are loss of connectivity or glitches. First one is if you have lost connectivity and you get a thing showing you have working offline at the top, it is one of two things. You're either in an area where the connection is really, really bad and it's going to work offline or you're disconnected from the internet. This is something that you can have an issue with once you're logged in or logged out. First step is to check if in the top right hand corner if you see a Wi-Fi icon. If we do not see a Wi-Fi icon, we want to make sure that Wi-Fi is on. In this case, we just turned it on. It is not finding the Wi-Fi yet. Oh, there it goes. In case it does, doesn't come up, we will then go into the settings app, click Wi-Fi, and make sure it is connected to the vehicle ELD network. Another issue that can occur from time to time is the app not accurately showing your hours or giving you some sort of issue. The best course of action in this case is to sign out of the app and sign back in. To sign out, we click the little square with the arrow. It'll then ask us if we want to sign out. We click sign out. It'll sign out and then bring us to the home screen. While it is signing out, it is not a good idea to close off the app because it can lead to a loss of information that you previously put into the app. The most common issue that drivers have is when they're signing in. And typically it's something as simple as the fleet ID is going to either be missing a letter or it's going to have a space right after it. If there is a space after the fleet ID or your username or an extra space in your password, it will not work. So please make sure that you check that by clicking it, making sure there's no extra spaces after it. Same thing, make sure your account is spelled properly, your username and password as well. If you have any issues that have not been covered in this video, please feel free to reach out to us or your fleet admin. They'll be more than happy to help. Till next time.